show uh, solidarity with the uh, not the public numbers. Yeah. 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 I don't remember the church ever really cared who did what as long as the Holy Spirit did. Yeah. That's the truth. So I'm, I'm just disappointed. I'm very disappointed in that now. Well, I mean, no, the Lord's nowhere near anything like that. Yeah, I know. I don't understand it either. That's that's going too far. Well, yeah. This new stuff, but it's come and gone. Most of it's falling apart at the seams right now. It really is. Yeah, because it wasn't going to stand on solid no. foundation. No, it, it wouldn't do. No. And uh, I just hate to see it happen. I really do. I know. Say it. It doesn't make me happy at all. That it I'm not a bit uh, envious or jealous. And I hate to see it happen in any church. They're not worried about that. They're Christian people. They're kind of worried about that. My prayers are for them. Yeah. But I just don't, I don't know. I hate to see it. I hate to see it in my day. Even though I'm not worried about it. Well, we tried to tell them. Well, I know it was hard to do that without coming off as a bigot or. I know. I know it all. Yeah. But you know that it never really bothered me. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, it's all about me. That's what I was trying to tell me. Even Paul in prison, he was yeah, worried. Really Not about his relationship. No, no. He worried for those that he loved. Yeah, he sure was. You say that you're not going to have to worry. Well, if you're not worried about it, you ain't going to pray about it. If you're not going to pray about it, you're not going to see any results of change. That's true. And then if you don't pray, Pray about it, confess it to God, you're going to carry it around, then you can come get it. Well, it's the problem right there. We've been up there and prayed before. Yeah, better than Scripture. Yeah. Really better than Scripture. Really better than Scripture. I've already preached some of that. You're sounding good. I got them warmed up. Yeah, you got them sounding good over there. I'm going to tell you, that's good. Nice. Hey, David. Hey, Irene. How you all doing?
nobody there is going to treat you. Nope. Ain't nobody wants to treat you real well. They keep your hand on your money. Yeah. And uh, stay clean and turn up. That's right. Don't go in. He knows he's going to see the tail in that four hours. He said, son, you can't get two TSAs. I got you. 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 I got you.
you also on the back that went to Rome. Why? Really? First time they let him go, the second time he had his head cut.
short so we'll get we'll uh make the out. Say 
Brady, how you feeling this evening? Today I'm feeling pretty good. Good. Well, we've been praying for you. She's looking good, and I'm glad she's feeling well. Anybody else want to mention one tonight? Yes. I remember our brother's son, uh, Michael. He had a motorcycle accident a couple weeks ago, but he's been vacuuming out of the hospital a couple times, and they said he might get to come home this evening, so I don't really know exactly what's still going on, but okay. just remember him. His name is Michael? Yeah. military in prayer and keep this situation over in the Ukraine in prayer. And Jerry Gaines, I think, is real sick, so I was going to mention that. He's got pneumonia. Yeah, that's pretty serious stuff. Anybody else want to mention one tonight? Yes, sir. several copies of each on the board there. Uh, 
Uh, so pick those up if you will. And then, as we mentioned, we're having a trip, hopefully this Saturday, 9 o'clock, is that right? 9 o'clock. Here at the church, weather permitting. Uh, those who have signed up for that, don't forget that. It'll be a great time. Uh, sunrise service will be 8.30 on April the 17th. Coming up right around the corner here, about two Sundays away. And uh, we're looking forward to that. We've got a lot of candy, and we're still collecting more candy. I've been checking some of it out. Boy, it's the best. Amen? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hadn't touched it. I wouldn't want to eat any of the children's stuff. But anyway, bring the plastic eggs, any candy, and I know they'll have a good time with their Easter egg hunt. And uh, we will meet this Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock with anyone who can help with that breakfast that morning. So uh, we'll try to get it all organized because it's going to be the next week. And so this Sunday evening, 5 o'clock, for anyone that's going to help with the Easter sunrise breakfast. Okay, I believe that's about all the different announcements we have. Uh, we have a handout. I hope everybody got one on Paul's journey. Uh, third missionary journey and also on his journey to Rome. If you didn't get one, we'll get one right here on the front for you. And uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. Go ahead and take the offering up. Randy, you want to come tonight? And uh, Jeremiah, you want to come tonight? All right. All right, Randy, would you lead us in prayer? Lord God, Lord, and I do thank you, Father, for an opportunity, Lord, to be in a warm, comfortable church, Lord, with some hey. good people. I pray, Lord God, you just might bless and encourage, Lord, as we're here, Lord, help us to come under the sound preaching of the word, Lord. Yes, Lord. Carry it home with us in this teaching and preaching session. Lord, I pray that you just bless the gift and the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. It's sing a long time here at Grace Baptist Church. You know the words, jump in.
be good. I mean, not spiritually. You know, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. The world will beat you up. It'll wear you out. It'll catch you by surprise. It'll knock the wind out of your sails. And it's just Wednesday. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I'm so, I'm about, have you ever been so tired that you just get going silly? That's what you say. So, in the spirit of being silly, we're going to sing a serious song, but it's done in a kind of a fun manner. Hadn't sung it forever, but I actually used this term today because they were trying to get me to do more than what I could do. And I said, son, you just can't get blood out of the turn. <laughs> reminded me of this song, so we won't try to sing it. Try to keep up with it. It moves fast. It moves faster than I do at times. <laughs> so, uh, just pray for us. Yeah. Well, the first man and woman was Adam and Eve, and Cain and Abel were their kids. Cain never raised Abel, Abel never raised Cain, but the mom and daddy did. Well, Cain became a tiller of the ground and a keeper of the sheep was Abel. Abel, he managed to please the Lord, but Cain just was an Abel. Well, Cain brought some vegetables to the Lord and I, well, back up. Well, Abel brought a little lamb to the Lord and Sweet smell and savor. Came from his garden, brought vegetables. Came from his garden, brought vegetables, and as he watched, they was offering burn up. Without a doubt, old Cain found out you can't get blood from a turnip. You can't get blood from a turnip, no matter how hard you try. If you could, then Jesus sure would not have bled and died. Well, if you ever get salvation, you'll find you just can't earn it. Without a doubt, you'll sure find out you can't get blood from the turnip. Well, now I hope you see salvation's free and there's just one way to get it. The boat will Calvary and it took Jesus to shed it. You just can't work your way to heaven. And if you don't learn it, you can find out that if you bought the farm, you won't get blood from the turnip. You can't get blood from the turnip, no matter how hard you try. If you could, then Jesus sure would not have bled and died. salvation you'll find you just can't earn it without a doubt you'll sure find out you can't get blood from a turnip you'll find soon after you bought the farm you can't get blood from the turnip message to that too isn't it? Yeah, yeah. without the shedding of blood there's no remission no forgiveness of our sin thank God for the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us okay we're going to get back into our study here tonight and we're finishing up the second missionary journey of Paul Paul's been preaching the gospel to the Gentiles and uh, we know that uh, he did not want to take one man with him on this second journey because that young man turned back on him. Went back home, got homesick. Anybody ever been homesick? That's a pretty bad sickness when you get homesick. And uh, what was that young man's name? Does anybody remember? John Mark, yes. And he went back and, of course, we know that... Uh, Paul took Silas, Barnabas took John Mark, and they split up, and they went out on this next journey. 
So anyway, the philosophers, Paul was preaching in Athens. We kind of looked at this last week. There were several people that got saved. And he goes towards Corinth. And when you look at Corinth on your, map, on, on your map there, you're going to see it's way down in this area. So uh, he's making a big circle. He starts way over here in Antioch, comes over in this area where he had started some churches, comes all the way across Asia Minor, over into Philippi. We know that's where they had the earthquake. And then he comes down here to Thessalonica, spent about two to three weeks there. He got run out. He had to leave up overnight. They were trying to kill him. But he started a great church there at Thessalonica. And uh, then he moved on down to Berea. And the Bereans, they were eager to hear the word of God. Uh, you can tell if somebody really is hungry for the word of God. That's what they were. The Berean, uh, the Berean Baptist churches sometimes are, you hear about them. That's a good name for a Baptist church because that's the one that was really interested in the Word of God. Then Mount Olympus is right there close by, but Paul goes right by there and comes down in here, preaches in Athens, Greece. That's all the philosophers. And then he goes over here to Corinth. Corinth had a lot of problems. And uh, then there's Sparta. I thought Sparta was in North Carolina, didn't you? <laughs> But uh, there's a Sparta way over there and uh, close to Corinth and Greece and Asia Minor. So anyway, we uh, checking this journey out here. He went about 2,400 miles, I believe it was. 24, 2,500 miles. He traveled a lot. And uh, his first one was about 1,400 and then the second two were twice as much. So it's probably right around 27, 2800. But Corinth, people tried to get a, Paul arrested. They kept coming after him everywhere he went. And uh, so they stood him up before Galileo. And Galileo refuses to press charges against Paul. Now here is the Bema. This is the Bema judgment. He alludes to the Bema judgment of Christ just like that he did here in this passage, we, we see that Paul, uh, if you have your Bible, you can turn to Acts chapter number 18. Uh, he stands before this man and he is judged. And one day we're going to stand before Jesus and be judged. Now you got to think about it. It's not to see if we get to go to heaven or not. That's already determined before we ever leave the world. Thank God when we've saved, we're going to heaven. But uh, that's a judgment of our works. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble. You say, preacher, do you know what represents what? Well, he will have a way to, to sort it all out. But if you think about it, the gold and the silver and the precious stone, the Bible said would be tried by fire, and that refines it. It gets pure. But then the wood, hay, and the stubble is just burned up. It's no good. And so we want to keep our focus not doing what we want, but what he wants. And I believe we'll have gold, silver, precious stones but doing what he wants. But in chapter number 18, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and he comes to Corinth. He found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because the Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, we looked at this last week, what kind of craft did Paul have? A tent maker, right. He was a tent maker. And they were tent makers. They had the same craft. So it says here, because they were of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought or worked with them for their occupation were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath. Now what day is the Sabbath on? Saturday. Saturday, right, Saturday. And that's when the Jews would worship. By the way, the Sabbath was a commemoration of the creation. Now when we worship on Sunday is a commemoration of Redemption. Right. A 
the resurrection of Christ. Uh, so when you look at the Bible, you'll see that God put, he put a lot of emphasis on his creation, but he put most of his emphasis on redemption. And that's why we worship on Sunday instead of on Saturday. We're remembering the resurrection. We're remembering that Jesus loved us and died for us, was buried and rose again. And so we see here that he meets up with a couple of people here as he's persuading the Jews in verse number 5, Silas and Timothy, they came from Macedonia. So Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews. What was his message? Jesus was the Christ. Well, there's no better message than that. That's what those Jews needed to hear. But the sad thing about the Jews, he came into his own, the Jewish people, and the Jews received him not. They turned their back upon Jesus. Crispus, it says here, and well, let's move back up to uh, verse 6. And when they uh, opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment. He said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I am Go unto the Gentiles. Amen. That is something that we enjoy tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God we're Gentiles. We're not naturally born Jews. I don't think anybody in here is. But a Jewish person can get saved the same way we get saved by putting their faith and trust in Christ. But he shifts his emphasis from the Jew to the Gentile. Now who was the apostle to the Jewish people? Peter. Remember, Peter went after the Jew, and he led most of the local missions. And actually, he was crucified upside down. Church history says he wouldn't be crucified the way Jesus was crucified. And so they took Peter, and they were going to kill him, and he said, turn me upside down. I am not even worthy to die like my Lord died. And so he had a great love for the Lord. But he basically was the the one to the Jewish people as Paul is to the Gentiles. And so here it says in verse 7, he departed thence, he entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard or close by the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, notice what happens here. He believes on the Lord. He's kind of like the pastor of the church. God can save anybody from the guttermost to the uttermost and everybody in between. Amen. Here's a religious man who had been teaching in the synagogues and all of a sudden God got a hold of him. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to be saved. And this man got saved. He believed on the Lord with all of his house. And then many of the Corinthians hearing they believed and they were baptized. So how many letters does Paul write to the Corinthians? First and second Corinthians. Verse number nine. Then spake the Lord to Paul in night by a vision. Now, if you'll notice in your Bible, these words are in red. What does that mean? Jesus. Right. The words of Christ. These are the words of Christ here. What does Christ tell Paul? Be not afraid, Paul. But you speak. Hold not thy peace. For I am with thee. Well, that's a great promise, isn't it? I'm glad we have Hebrews 13, verse 5. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. It says, No man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. So he continued there about 18 months, a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. So he has a great ministry there in Corinth. That's a year and a half of teaching. That's probably the most he had ever been able to stay at any location because these Judaizers were always trying to stir the people up against him. And the Lord said, enough is enough. I want you to teach these people for 18 months. And he does. Continue there, a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Galileo, which was the deputy of Acacia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul. Here it comes. And they brought him up to that judgment seat. And this is the judgment seat of Corinth right there. And he's standing there and they're judging him. And so it says here, they brought him to the judgment seat saying, This fellow persuadeth men 
to worship God contrary to the law. What were they looking at? The Old Testament. Not the New Testament. The Old Testament. The New Testament was not written yet, but they had the Word of God in their hearts, and the Holy Spirit was teaching them what to say, and then they did write the New Testament. But they were preaching that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Everything you read about a Messiah in the Old Testament, Jesus is the fulfillment of that. Right. And so he says here that they brought all of this insurrection against him with one accord. He stood there at the judgment seat saying this fellow persuades them to worship contrary to our laws. You see, they said that you had to be circumcised and you had to keep the law and you had to do all of these man-made things. You could not go over a mile on the Sabbath day. You could not sew a button on your sleeve on the Sabbath day. You could not even look in a mirror on the Sabbath day because you might comb your hair. I mean, it's ridiculous. Most of it was not even from God. Most of it was man-made rules and regulations. And Jesus said, you put a heavy burden on the people that you don't even keep yourself. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff they were having to put up with here. And so Paul is trying to tell them, wait a minute, no, no. It's only found in Jesus Christ and Him alone. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. Woo! Thank God it's a gift of God. Amen. What do you do with a gift? Do you try to earn it or buy it? Oh no. You just receive it. That's what eternal life is. You receive Christ as your Savior. And so, verse number 14, when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, if it were a matter of wrong or wickedness or lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it's a question of words and names and your law, you look to it. For I will be no judge of such matters. He said, I'm not going to have anything to do with this. And he drove them away from the judgment seat. God took care of that, didn't he? This man just felt compelled from the Lord, I believe, to get him out of there, that he wasn't going to get involved in it. And so all the Greeks took Sophonies, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and they beat him. Remember, he's the preacher that got saved. They beat him before this judgment seat, and Galileo cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while. He stayed there a long time. And he took leave of the brethren. He sailed into Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila came with him, and he cut his hair in uh, Sincerea, for he had made a vow. We don't know that was a Nazarite vow or not. A Nazarite could not do three things. And the most famous of all the Nazarites was a man by the name of Samson. You remember Samson? What were the three things a Nazarite couldn't do? <laughs> couldn't cut his hair, couldn't touch a dead carcass, and he couldn't drink of the fruit of the vine. Guess who broke all three of them? <laughs> Samson. Samson did. He got drunk. Uh, he let. He went to the devil's barber shop for one thing. That's his problem. And Delilah cut his hair. And uh, then he also touched many dead carcasses. <laughs> didn't he? Uh, yeah, he sure did. Ate honey out of a dead carcass at one. So I'm not sure if that's the vow that he took or what, but he had to cut his hair. And he came to Ephesus and left from there, and he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So what do we see here? Court. The people try to get him arrested. They bring him up there. Galeo refuses to press charges. Here is a stone with an inscription in Greece that mentions this governor. The word there is Galeo. In the province of Acacia, the name Galeo is highlighted right here. The more they dig, the more it verifies. God's word is true. Amen. I mean, these archaeologists, the more they dig down in the ground, they find out hey, what God said is true. Do you realize at the South Pole, within just a few miles of the southernmost part of our earth, 
that they did, they dug up into the ice and they found tropical plants. And they found whale skeletons. How in the world could that happen? Well, at one time the whole world was covered with water. It's called Noah's flood. <laughs> and it's amazing. God said, dig all you want, because you're going to find out what God says is the truth. And that's what we see here. Here's a witness. Uh, you see these from time to time. It wasn't long ago, just a year or two ago, I saw on the History Channel that they they uh, dug some bricks and some pottery in Jerusalem that had King David on it. Now that was 1,000 B.C. That'd be 3,000 years ago. And they dug that up and it had King David. It's amazing. So the more they dig, the more it verifies God's word is true. So notice what happens here next. They go in Corinth. He writes two letters to the Christians of Thessalonica, first and second Thessalonians. There's the temple of Apollo at Corinth. He meets Aquila and Priscilla who join him. They're the tent makers. They go to Censeria. And so now what are they doing? They're getting ready to come down into this area right in here. Now, Charles was talking about the Fair Havens. That's down in Crete. When he goes to Rome on his final journey, they get right in this area here, and boy, they coast for weeks and weeks and there's no there's no wind for their sails and they end up finally in a shipwreck and they finally get up on land well, on a board and Paul goes over there to grab some wood that's trying to start a fire and guess what grabbed a hold of Paul when he reached down there and got some of that wood? A snake. Yes, a poisonous viper. And you know what he did? He shook it off in the fire and just kept on working. And all the natives said, wait a minute, he's going to fall over dead any time. Because <laughs> that was a poisonous snake, probably a cobra. And uh, he didn't. He just kept on working, and they couldn't believe it. And they started worshiping him as God. He said, hold it, I'm not God. I'm his servant. God is the one who saved me. God is the one who protected me. And God will protect you, friends. We've mentioned it. We're in a dangerous world. Thank God nothing can happen to you except for it come through the hand of God. He's protecting us. And so, when you get down to Censorea, Paul gets his hair cut. He had taken this vow. Not many details are mentioned about it. He is there with Priscilla and Aquila. He set sail to Ephesus. In Ephesus, Paul reasons with the Jews in the synagogue. They ask him to stay longer, but he declines. And so he's going to come and cross over the water to Ephesus, and then he's going to make his way back over here. Well, first he's going to come down to Jerusalem and then go back to his home church up in Antioch. But Ephesus, do we have a book called Ephesians? Yeah. <laughs> we sure do. And that's the book that he wrote to that church at Ephesus. Uh, you can pick that up in chapter number 19. So we pick it up in 19. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. He found certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what? Were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. What baptism was that? John the Baptist. Remember him? His baptism was a baptism of repentance. You know, repent from your sins. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so they didn't know anything about true salvation as far as Christ coming and the Holy Spirit taking up residence in your body. Do you realize your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God? And he's the one who will tell you at times, don't go there. Stay away from that person. He has a way of guiding us and leading us
to do the right things if we just allow him to control us. Listen to him. He'll be there. And the good thing about in the New Testament, the Bible said that we are sealed until the day of redemption with the Holy Spirit. That means we cannot lose the Holy Spirit. He is in us forever. Woo! Glory to God for that. Amen. In the Old Testament, they could lose the Holy Spirit. You read about it. Saul of Tarsus, I mean not Saul of Tarsus, Saul, King Saul, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon him and the Spirit of God left him. <coughs> And then David at one time, after he committed sin with Bathsheba, you know what he prayed? Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. And so in the Old Testament, it was a temporary. In the New Testament, it's permanent. Amen. We got a lot of benefits as, as the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what happens next? In verse number four, then said Paul, John verily baptized a baptism of repentance saying unto the people that you should believe on him what should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank God that's Christian baptism. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And I believe that means they had the ability to preach and teach in previously unknown languages. That's the speaking of tongues on the day of Pentecost. There were people there from all around the world and they were hearing the gospel in their native tongue. And I know that there's a lot of <coughs> congregations and they look at that and they say, no, it's a heavenly language that only certain people are, pri are privileged to have. But according to what the Bible said, tongue shall cease. And the word of God is complete. And the word of God has been completed. Amen. So all the men there, it says, were about 12. And he went into the synagogue. He spoke boldly for the space of three months. That's a long sermon, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't quite three months at one time, though. Three months. He took a few breaks at night and came back the next day. <laughs> Disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. There were divers or different people. They were hardened, believing not. They spoke evil of that way, talking about the Christian life. Before the multitudes, he departed from them and separated to the disciples, disputing daily in the school with one Tyrannus. So Paul here is finding out that there are some people who are going to accept it, and there are some people who are going to reject it. Have you found that to be the case? When you witness, you hope everybody you witness to is going to get saved, but sometimes they don't. Don't let that stop you. Don't let the devil say, well, it doesn't do any good. Yes, it does. You may just be breaking up some hard ground. They may never have heard of the gospel, and when you tell them about the Lord, it may just be breaking up that hard ground in their heart, and then the next time somebody witnesses to them, they may get saved. You're planting a seed in that heart when you tell them about Jesus. So it's not our responsibility to save them anyway. We can't save anybody. But we can tell them how to be saved. We're the messengers. Only God is the Savior. So don't let Satan tell you it doesn't do any good. It does do a lot of good. And that's the only way to be saved. Hearing by the word of God, the Bible says. So then notice in verse number 10, he continued here by the space of two years. So that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both the Jews and the Greeks. Paul wrote special miracles by the hands of, of God, wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body there were brought the, unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists. Have you ever heard of the exorcists? Well, that's dealing with witchcraft and demons. It says here, when they heard about Jesus, boy, they had to flee. Why? Because they're not as strong as he is. They're part of the creation. All a demon is is a fallen angel. God created a certain amount of angels. 
Satan himself was the anointed cherub, the anointed angel of God who led the choir in heaven and he turned and thought he could take over God's position. And when he did that, God kicked him out. And he's been rebelling ever since. And he knows he's on the losing team, but he tries his best to get back at God by coming after us, the children of God. But here's the good news. The book of Revelation says two-thirds of the angels remained loyal to God. Only one-third of the angels sided in with Lucifer and became demons. And so we got them outnumbered two to one. <laughs> That's the good news. We got them outnumbered two to one. Now notice we're getting ready to look at an evil spirit here. It says there in verse number 13, certain of the vagabonds used these exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, We adjure you by the Jesus and Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one, uh, Seba, a Jew, chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> See, they thought it was just a magical formula. That anybody could say, okay, in the name of Jesus, you demon have to get out of that man. And they weren't even saved themselves. And the demon said, well, I know who Paul is and I know who Jesus is, but I don't think I've ever heard of you. <laughs> it's kind of amusing, isn't it? And so what happens next? Well, verse 16, the man with whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. That evil spirit jumped all over them, overcame them prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Could you imagine? They got whipped from head to toe, didn't they? Bruised and battered. I bet they didn't try that again. That's, that's something you better be careful about. You better be close to the Lord if you're dealing with demons. Because he can handle them. But just saying this as a magic formula, it's not going to work. In verse 17, and this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds, and many of them also which used curious arts. Now this is magic. This is witchcraft. Brought all of these books together and burned them counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. I mean, the, the witchcraft was going out of business. They even took all of these things that they had conjured up these demons with and burned them. Burned the books that told them how to do it. I mean, revival's breaking out. Amen. <laughs> and it's really a revival here. And after these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit. And when he had passed through Macedonia and Acacia, he wanted to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. He's going to have to go back. So he sent unto Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timothy and Erastus, and he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. That way means the Christian life. And so we see here that Paul leaves Priscilla and Aquila in Ephesus. He sets sail for Caesarea, Syria, and Jerusalem. Of course, this is Diana, the goddess of Ephesus. And they were, there were some wicked religions back in those days. And, and they had these temple prostitutes that would come out and try to persuade the people to come into the temple and do all kinds of immoral things and saying this is worshiping God. It wasn't worshiping God, it was worshiping the devil. That's exactly what it was. And so after visiting the churches, he returns to his home base in Antioch. So here he goes. He's right there around the Ephesus area. He leaves there, he goes all the way down to Caesarea and then back up to Antioch. Antioch of Syria. See, there's another Antioch over here. There's two Antiochs in the Bible mentioned. 
Tarsus. That's where he came from. Saul of Tarsus. Okay. I think that's about enough for tonight. I believe we've covered a lot of scripture there. You know what this tells me? That God is greater than Satan ever could dream. Amen. I mean, we are on the winning team. Amen. And there's no way Satan is ever going to win. He keeps trying and trying his best. But I've read the last chapter and I know God wins. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, let's bow our heads for prayer and Charles can come and play softly. While he does, maybe you'd like to have prayer tonight. If you'd say, preacher, just pray for me. I've got a special need in my life. I've got a burden that's on my heart. Just remember me tonight, if you will. I'll be glad to. Anyone like that, you'd slip a hand up all around the building. God knows what's heavy on your heart. Hands are lifted. Father, you've seen our hands. You know our hearts. God, we're weak and you're strong, and we know that you're able to help us. You're able to give us that strength and that power you gave the Apostle Paul. You're no respecter of persons. If you did it for him, you'll help us, and we know you will. So bless every person here tonight, those that had a hand raised for whatever need it might be. During this time of invitation, let us draw closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand our feet, heads are bowed, and eyes are closed. As Charles plays softly. Maybe you want to come around the altar and just pray. No better place to pray than right there around that altar. God will give you strength. God will hear your prayer. God will touch you, encourage you, lift your spirits, give you direction, give you guidance. You come and seek Him. He says, I'll draw close to you when you draw close to me. Oh, yes. Anybody else? You want to come and pray? You feel free to come. Down at the cross, where the Savior died, that's where he was crucified. There's where it all started. <laughs> Great transaction was completed. Satan's doom was sealed. Oh, he suffered a heel wound, but he crushed the head of Satan. Thank God we were on. Went inside tonight. Amen. Glory to his name. If you're glad that you're on the winning side tonight, let's give him one last amen together. Ready? Amen. amen. Praise God for that. Okay. Paul, would you dismiss us in prayer? After he does, tell somebody you love them. Good to see them in church, and I hope you have a great week. Brother Paul. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord. We thank you for the being in the house, Lord. We thank you for the message, Lord. God, we pray that you'll take it to Christ. He will come to Christ in the house, Lord. We pray that you'll ask each other to quit us, Brother Paul, for you and I, Lord. You and your will. Be with each and every one as they leave tonight. We have to thank you, Brother Paul. Bring us back in the time. We love you, and we thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.